much that I didn't just know because I've just walked up the stairs. But it seems to get like this whenever I'm tired, things are a lot worse. Maria has been a nurse for more than 20 years. She was hospitalised with coronavirus in June and has been struggling with lingering symptoms since she was discharged. I thought I was coming home for a few days of rest and then probably going back to work. But um, after about a week or so, you know, I, I was actually felt as if I was worse. The fatigue was overwhelming. I couldn't get out of bed. And if I did get up, my legs were shaky. They were really jelly-like. The chest pain was still there and that was really concerning. I got referred to respiratory. I got referred to cardiology. Everything came back OK. The GP says we're just going to, you're just going to need to ride this out. I have a split and sore head, a slight pressure goes down into your teeth and down the back of your eyes and I've got pain across the top of my back as well. Eight months or so on, how are the symptoms now? How are you feeling? I still have ongoing joint pain, chest pain. I still get breathless at times. I really am desperate to get back to work. The district nursing team that I worked with, you know, they're really busy and I just, I wish I was there, you know, to help them. I, I do feel really guilty for my own mental health. I think it would be great, but I need to be ready to be able to cope with it as well. I'm sitting at the table just now, cutting up carrots um, for the soup because I can't stand in the kitchen for too long. What kind of challenges are you finding in your daily life? We've always been a busy family. We've always had lots to do. Things like coming out to play, I can't do that anymore, which is really upsetting because I've got an eight and a ten year old who love having their mum outside playing with them. Household tasks, we try and share that workload out. Running up and down the stairs, I used to do that loads every day, you know, and now I'm really aware that if I go up the stairs, I'm going to be breathless by the time I get to the top. My husband wanted to go a walk today, and he really needs to go a walk because he's stuck in that room all during the week working. But I couldn't. It was rubbish. And the emotion of all of that must be difficult. It is, but I try not to be too emotional, especially in front of the children or my husband. Because they want you to say that you're better, and I want to be better, but it doesn't always work like that. There are lots of questions I have that are unanswered. There's lots of things I don't know how long this is going to last for and what my future holds. Wendy, a mum of two from Renfrewshire, fell ill just before the national lockdown in March. My daughter was in tears the other day, um, saying, I miss my real mum. I want fun mummy back. That sounds but, so difficult to, to hear her say that. Yeah, because I know that they just want me to be back to normal and I can't, I can't magic myself back. My lungs hurt, my rib cage just is sore, I can't find a comfy way to lie. Before I was really pretty active and busy, now I have to pace myself to do everything. I'm really struggling with cooking. Um, I get quite dizzy if I'm standing up and sitting down. I feel a bit bossy because I'm just sitting there telling them what to do. I'm like, right, go to that cupboard, get that pan out. Right, now go to this cupboard. What do you like baking? Cake. Cake. <laughs> I've had to completely change what my hobbies are. Before, I loved walking and going outdoors and doing stuff. Um, and I can't do that now. Before falling ill, Wendy ran a successful business, leading children's music classes. Music is obviously a big part of your life and the fact you can't now sing, how does that make you feel? I think that's been one of the hardest things to deal with. Now I manage a line or two and then I, I just can't keep going. I can still play the piano. One of the other symptoms that I had was I just would get quite confused and I couldn't concentrate on anything. That has improved a bit. I don't feel unwell, 
but I can tell there are definitely things that are not right and it's stopping me from being able to live a kind of normal life. Trying to stay focused on the hope and the, you know, the crack that lets the light in, but, you know, it isn't always smiles and it's difficult. 10 months is a long time. Like Wendy, Callum, a 29-year-old from Aberdeen, caught coronavirus early on in the pandemic. There hasn't been a day where I haven't spent more than at least two, sometimes up to six hours resting in bed. My capacity to work has been greatly diminished. I've had to move back in with my parents so they could help look after me. At one point, I, I had a shower and then I had to lie down for four hours. Not long ago, I would have been running 10Ks, going to the gym and leading an active, busy lifestyle. What do you miss the most? The freedom that you have when you're an able-bodied person and just knowing that I'll wake up and there won't just be something new that's just gone wrong and I'm like, all right, <laughs> okay. I've just had to accept this. You have to kind of still try and make the best of it. You find the enjoyment in knowing I can walk the dog now, you know, every two or three days. A few months ago, I couldn't even do that. Good lad. What would you like to see in terms of support for sufferers like yourself? A more holistic approach towards recovery. There's a bit of a debate going on at the moment about how best to administer long COVID care, whether it's through primary care or through these dedicated specialist clinics. I think it's harder to bring thousands of GPs up to the level of long COVID specialists than it would be to funnel people into people who are becoming long COVID specialists. Hi, Callum. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that you're still suffering symptoms from coronavirus. And, and while that debate continues, GPs like Dr Sandesh Gulhani are doing what they can to offer support. The patients that I see, and I've reached out to discuss with them what they would like to see us doing. And, and the overwhelming thing that I've heard back is empathy. That is the best thing that I've got in my armoury because there is no test and there is no cure. That's not really doing enough. I'm feeling as though I wish I could do something more. I know there isn't a magic wand just yet to kind of wave. It's really frustrating because there's still a lot that can be done in terms of helping people like understand the mental and psychological impacts of their new illness. And I think that's lacking at the moment. It's treating things at a symptomatic level and not necessarily wanting to go any deeper. We're all learning uh, and this is all a, a brand new thing that's evolving. Long COVID is a real condition. It affects people, it destroys lives and we need to think more about it and we need to try and reach out and get these patients the help they need. But for those facing a daily battle with this condition, help can't come quickly enough. The case numbers are really, really high again. What if that then brings another whole load of people that in a few months time are suffering with what I've been going through? My future at the moment is very uncertain. I can't really plan for, for things that far in the future. I don't know what my life will look like in five years' time. I understand the pressures that the NHS is under just now with this acute phase of COVID, but going forward, long COVID is going to be there for a while, I think. And, you know, it's going to get worse. 